You know how come the chicken crossed the road, huh? Uh, ready to run away from them Cajuns, I'll tell you right now, because Cajuns will eat most anything, and they love to cook chicken. They love to eat chicken. That's for true. I'll tell you that right now. And uh, today I'm going to cook you some chicken gumbo with on do in it. That's a sausage that's a, that we make in Louisiana just for making gumbo. It's a gumbo sausage. It's spelled A-N-D-O-U-I. L-L-E, on do it. Anybody know how to spell that? I guarantee <laughs> And it's a wonderful sausage, so seized sausage. It really is. Now, right now at all, what I would like to do is just tell you a story. I'm going to tell you a story before I get started. Because I like to did that. I like, just like to get myself in a good humor and everybody else is looking at me. Years ago in Baton Rouge, when they had just one precinct for the police station, they got a call there from an old maid, female lady woman. She wasn't making gumbo, no. They just got a call from her. And she said, brought yourself. And right now, the dispatching man on the telephone say, what's the trouble, lady, huh? She said, there's a man next door with indecent exposing himself to me, and I don't like that some, none at all, any. Well, they send one of them petroleum cars right now. <laughs> the red light blinkety, 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 the syringe on full blast. And they get there, and you get out, the policeman cop, go to the door, flap, 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 knock on the door, and this lady brought herself to the door. She said, brought yourself with me. He followed her right into her bedroom. And she pointed next door and said, look at that. That man indecent exposed himself to a maiden female woman like me. And he look over there next door, and there's a man in his bathroom shave himself. Got one of them high windows that hit him right here on the chest. And he said, lady. I can't took that man downtown for Indies and exposing himself. All I can see is his head, neck, and shoulder in that high window. She said, stood up on his box over here, get a much more better view, I guarantee you. <laughs> now, what I got you in this pot is what I'm going to tell you about how to make. I got some chicken. That's a, a baking hen that I'm going to use. Right here, I got the rest of the stuff I'm going to put on that. You don't have to put much on this, really and truly. I uh, got some saucisse right here, too. That's a gumbo sausage. First, you make a roux. You know that. And to make a roux, I put about three quarters of a cup of olive oil in there. Olive oil. And I also, too, I put about a cup and a half of flour. You put about uh, two to one. And you cook that until it's so you think, that's going to burn. But that's not what it did. See, it got to cook like Dutch chocolate right there. You see? That's so pretty. Stir them roux. That's the roux right there. That roux is, is I'm going to put the rest of the stuff on that roux and cook it in there a little bit before I put the chicken. I got one big onion. It's about a cup. One cup of onion, a large onion. Put that on the roux. Turn the roux up a little bit. Not much goes in, not much seasoning goes in chicken gumbo because they don't need much. You stir it into them roux, and you cook them onion until they clear. Or you think they're clear now. You can't read the newspaper through them, but they look clear, you know. Oh, man, that's a good roux. No, oh, that's the kind we like to make sandwiches out of, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, I say that all the time. Now, as soon as I get this going like this, Get this over here like this, like that. Get those onion kind of clear. Then I'm going to put something else. Now, a lot of people, when they make chicken gumbo, they brown their chicken off. What we call brown off, we brown off. And sometimes you use the grease where we brown them chicken off to make the roux. But I want to tell you, that's hard to do. So I don't do it that way, no. And also, too, it doesn't, it does, to me, it does not give the flavor to the gumbo. When you brown the chicken off, you, you lose some of the flavor of the chicken. So what I do is, when I get my onion clear in here and get a little juice, which I got a little juice already, I put my garlic, which is just one large clove of, clove of garlic, chop up real fine. In the reason, I always wait till I got juice, like I always told people. The garlic will get hard and lose its flavor if you don't did that. Now, I got that like that. Put it on there, and I got a few little things I got to put on here, too, like uh, 
I use wine when I make my gumbo. I got four cup of sauterne and four cup of water that I'm gonna put on here. What I like to do is just put my water first and get my roux kind of mixed with them water. Turn the fire up where I'm gonna got some hot on it. But you got to watch them hot with them roux because you can burn a roux, but not that you get some water on it like that. Put it in and get this. It look like it's not gonna mix. Who a guarantee it's gonna mix. I got that on there like that. The next thing what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little of my seasoning on there, like uh, two tablespoonful of uh, how you call it, uh, Worcestershire, Lee and Perrin. The good Cajun name there, Perrin. One, two, two. <laughs> tablespoonful of them, how you call it, Worcestershire sauce. Now, I'm gonna put some, if I had my fresh hot pepper, I'd put that on there. But I don't got that, so I'm gonna use Louisiana hot sauce. Now, you can use this, or Tabasco. This is made from cayenne pepper. Tabasco is made from uh, Tabasco pepper. I use both of them. I, I like this a little bit better. And what you, you put as much as you want to. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put about a, a teaspoonful and a little more on there. Because I like hot sauce, I think I'm gonna put a little more. Put that on there, and you see that beginning to get hot, bubbling up at least a little bit, make them roux. Oh, boy. Now, what I'm gonna did, I'm gonna put the sausage in there. See that? Ooh, you smell the smoke on that. That's good. Put that on there. And put some chicken. Now, it takes about one to two pounds of chicken. I got a little bit more than that in this bowl already cut up. And I'm gonna put most of it in there. But I wanna be sure I got room and I put the pieces I like most of all, which is all of the chicken. <laughs> the drum leg, second joint. And when you cut up chicken for gumbo, you do it a little bit different than you do ordinarily for other things. Like this second joint there, I cut off part of the meat and put there. And I love the back. You uh, know, the part what go over the fence last. I like that too. <laughs> it's got the flavor there. And I love the gizzard. See, I cut that in half, but in case somebody else like gizzard too. We put that on there. And that ought to be close to enough meat on there and still hold on to the pot. We don't want it to lose the pot. Put this down here, out of the way, in these two. Stir that around a little bit. Get them roux going good, and it's going good. And guess what? Four cup of sauterne wine. And the reason why, how come I quit putting them chicken in there, I want to be sure I get all the wine in there. And it does just that. You see that? Now I got to put some salt. You got the salt to taste. Now you got a whole big chicken in there, and that's gonna take some salt. Let's see. One teaspoonful, and I want to be sure I don't uh, lie to people about the teaspoonful, you see. I'm gonna put about two and a half teaspoonful of salt, and then after I let it cook a while, I'm gonna taste it. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna taste that and see if it's got enough, enough salt on that. I'm gonna stir it around a little bit. That roux gonna come out of there all right, gonna be just like it's supposed to be dead all the time. Isn't that pretty? And it's gonna be good. Let me tell you something about this bongo, gumbo there. Bongo, some of them people call it. What you did with this, now you cook this today and don't serve it today, no. Put it in your ice box tonight. And tomorrow, bring it to a bowl and let it simmer for about an hour. And then eat that, because it tastes more better then. Whew, it always does. That's for true, it really does. Now, and when we serve this, we serve it with filet. Now, you notice there's no okra in this, so it's not thick. But filet is the leaf of the sassafras tree. It is taken off the tree about the second or third week in September, where I live, and we pound it. We pound that, that sassafras leaf.